Hey guys, how's it going? Like Butter here, and today I got another Division 2 video. We're going to be talking about weapon attachments today. Which attachments should you use on your guns, and why I think they are the best choice for each class. Um, also, I want to just kind of give you guys a rundown for those of you who may not know how the attachment system works in the Division 2. It works very different than it did in the Division 1. In the Division 1, you would basically find attachments laying around. They were in the loot pool. Um, in the Division 2, it's a little bit different. You find all the attachments through blueprints. So um, the first thing you could do is you can go over to Coop Denison over here. Um, this is where you get your skills and your perks. Now, there are a couple of perks here that will unlock attachments for you. So once, and, and I mentioned this in my endgame video that came out a couple days ago, um, if you're trying to level up as fast as possible, you want to first go for the... Um, for the XP perk here, but then, you know, once you start wanting more attachments, you would go with these and these will unlock certain blueprints for the attachments. So some of the blueprints are unlocked through perks. Now, remember in early game stages, the negatives are very, very rough to deal with when you're dealing with just such a small amount of stats. So I actually highly suggest that you don't worry about attachments till you get to the end game. So this is more of like an end game thing. You can use some if you want, like maybe like the extended mags, for example, may be uh, decent because you're only sacrificing rate of fire and it gives you a much larger mag. So in that case, you would want to level this perk up. But as far as like some of the um, the optics and like the uh, barrels, it can be really rough losing so much. Uh, so I'll even give you guys an idea of which attachments you want to use uh, early. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to go over to the crafting bench, which I'm going to show you guys where you craft your attachments. Now, don't forget, you have to level up this crafting bench as you play. Uh, so make sure to get materials and use that. But as soon as you unlock a blueprint for a mod, it's going to show up here. And these are where all your um, mods are going to be. You see how it has a check mark near like everything. But look, there's one here that I haven't crafted yet. So I'm going to show you. You literally just hit X or whatever the craft button is on console. As long as you have the materials here, you can craft this and it will show you the stats. Um, every attachment has a positive and negative. So for this, uh, you're getting plus 10% damage to elites, negative 15 stability. All right, let's go through with the 556 uh, rifle suppressor here as well. This is going to give uh, stability and give you negative optimal range so that might be good on a gun that already doesn't have great optimal range and you're only going to lose a couple of meters of uh of damage fall off and you really need stability so something maybe like a famas or something of that nature so here's where all your mods are going to be now how do you unlock blueprints for mods well you get them through multiple things you got projects which you can get from settlements that will tell you that you're going to unlock a certain mod um, for the most part, I think I have almost all of them unlocked myself, so I don't have any left. Or you can unlock them through side missions. So when you got those little blue hexagons around the map, um, they kind of look like this, but they are I think they're actually pentagons. Here you go. Here's a perfect example. This is a side mission here. This gives me blueprint defensive protocol resilience. So this is giving me a mod. But a lot of the early like blueprints that you'll see are going to come from those side missions. So once you get those side missions done, you'll unlock the blue, uh, the blueprint, and then you have to go to where I just showed you guys and craft it. So we're going to go down to the trusty firing range, and I'm going to talk to you guys about which mods I use on which guns. Okay, so let's start off with maybe um, an assault rifle. Assault rifles are uh, pretty popular for the most part. I'm going to go to my CTAR, and we're going to talk about the differences in each mod. Okay, so this is probably the most, uh, like, I guess the hardest mod to use for a certain weapon because of losing 10 crit chance. Losing 10 crit chance is absolutely absurd. However, on guns that have really wide accuracy, it's not terrible to use. So I was actually testing it yesterday, and I really couldn't tell a difference in my damage output um, compared to whether I was hitting more shots or not. Um, but so let's go through all the, the positives and negatives and give you guys an idea of what each stat means. So accuracy is the bloom of your gun. Um, I talked about this in my, uh, in my DPS video. So what does the bloom of your gun mean? All right. So let's go in, let's strip this weapon from all of uh, its attachments. So right now it's a completely naked gun. Now I want you guys to watch the middle of my crosshair. 
you are going to see that small little white dot. I will even put it up against something so you can really, really see it. That small little white dot is going to show you the overall like spread of your gun, right? So you're going to see it hopping all over the place. You see that jumping all over the place? You got that little white dot skipping around. Well, when you add accuracy, what's going to happen is you're going to have the range that that little dot can jump around is going to be a much smaller cone. So now I put accuracy on. Let's watch. You see how it doesn't jump around as much anymore? What stability is, is how much your gun or your camera moves up when you're when you're firing the gun. So I'm not doing anything to my mouse. I'm just letting it shoot right up in the air. You see how it's going up and you have to actually pull the crosshair down. That's your stability. So on PC, uh, like if you're really good with a mouse, you can actually deal with some really, really rough stability problems. But just to give you an idea, I'm going to throw this Omega suppressor on, which is going to get, make my uh, stability a lot better. Now when I shoot, you see that? It's a lot easier to control. So stability is much more important, I think, on console because obviously on console, you're using the, the two thumbsticks to try to control the stability. So I always use for my underbarrel, I always use the plus 10 crit chance, minus 10 stability. Now you could try this, but like I said, this is more of because I just can control the stability really well on most guns. But you can try to see if that's what you want to run. Now, um, for ARs, I tend to not use the accuracy. I tend to use, you can use the reflex sight, um, which will lower your accuracy. However, I will say on the TAR specifically, I think this is a really bad pick here. Um, you could always go something else, like if you wanted to go damage to elites and sacrifice some optimal range. If you were doing PVE, you could do that. Um, however, losing accuracy really, really isn't great on the TAR, and I'll show you exactly why here. So let's take the... Um, Let's take the accuracy or, or what is it? The stability. Yeah. Okay. It's stability. So we have negative uh, accuracy here, which is going to really, really hurt our, uh, the, the bullet pattern. Watch here in a second. You see how it's really just kind of skipping all over the place. Now it's, it doesn't have that small window of, of recoil. Well, that's why I, you know, I tend to like to run some accuracy, but losing 10% crit chance can be pretty uh, detrimental for sure. So you definitely want to make sure that you're willing to give that up. Um, but you can see the accuracy is so much smaller, so much smaller when you add that little bit of accuracy to it. So that this is a decision you have to make. Um, I can't tell you what I think is the best. I honestly think that for the most part, you're usually going to go crit damage, crit chance on most things, especially on rifles and SMGs. So SMGs already have high crit chance. Remember your crit chance is maxed at uh, 60%. It's hard capped, um, which means you can't go over 60%. So what I usually do is uh, I will actually put 10% crit chance on my, uh, on my under barrel. I will put, uh, you know, any type of like optimal range. This is negative stability, but it gives me optimal range. Um, if you're having stability problems, you can go stability and minus accuracy. But I never want to go minus accuracy. I think accuracy is one of the most important stats in the game. And uh, a lot of people seem to uh, not quite understand that because it seems like a pointless stat. But when the game is bloom based and not projectile based, it makes a huge, huge difference. Um, so, for example, if you are having accuracy problems, you can go here and you can see it's a lot tighter accuracy there. The bullets are going to be in a lot smaller cone. Um, so for SMGs, you usually want to put crit damage on anything that you can put crit damage on. So for example here, um, if I had the small under barrel, that might be something that you want to put on. Um, this is a vertical grip. This gives you plus accuracy as well and minus stability. If you needed more accuracy, that's always fine. But these are like the overall idea is for rifles. You want to have crit damage. The reason because you have right rifle uh, critical hit damage here and you want crit chance in any spot that you can so I have crit chance as my under barrel of course that 10 uh, crit chance I have headshot damage on my mag I have critical damage on my reflex site and I have accuracy on my barrel the reason I have accuracy is because like I said accuracy especially on guns like the um 
like the uh, MK17 or like any rifle, you're gonna want the guns to be as accurate as possible because you want to be as precise as possible. You're gonna be using this weapon at longer ranges, which means you're really going to wanna make sure that you're hitting those consistent headshots as you can see here. And uh, so basically on SMGs and rifles, you want as much crit chance and crit damage as you can get. On assault rifles specifically, I like to go for accuracy. So when I kind of let it fly, um, I can hit as many shots as uh, as I can. Um, and then also on LMGs, what I'll show you, uh, one of my setups for LMGs, I was using this uh, tactical M249 para, which I actually love. Um, since you're going to be doing most of your damage just pretty much raw, um, you're going to get a super large amount of crit chance if you uh, if you hit that. Um, but you also have to keep in mind that the stability on on uh, LMGs are pretty damn good, and the accuracy is pretty decent as well. Um, it, as you can see, like it says low accuracy here, but you'll see what I mean. Like once you start, like the LMGs have this passive where once you start shooting a certain amount of time, the gun becomes more accurate. So what I actually use for my LMGs is I, I like putting a little bit more optimal range on it so that the drop off isn't as bad as you, you guys can see here. Um, so you can use them at longer ranges, but if you needed more stability, you could use it there. Um, or you could even go damage to elites if you wanted to, if you're doing PVE, but I like to use a little bit of the extra uh, optimal range because once I start shooting, it stays pretty accurate. But do you see that that side to side movement? That's a horizontal stability problem. So if I want that to stay a little bit smoother, I may say, okay, well, I'm going to go stability here and sacrifice some optimal range. You see how it isn't moving side to side as much anymore? It's still moving a little bit, but it's not moving like as much as it was before. It's also easier to control as well. So it's all dependent on which attachments you specifically want to use. And it also depends on the gun as well. For example, the G36 has this problem where the uh, accuracy is really bad. You see how it gets really big and like there's even some like bullets going outside the crosshair completely. You see that one to the top left. So if that's the case, I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, okay, well, I need a little bit of stability for my gun. I'm going to sacrifice... You know, I may sacrifice, uh, or sorry, accuracy. I'm going to sacrifice some crit chance for this accuracy because say I have a bunch of crit chance on my gear and, you know, I have this talent that gives me a certain amount of crit chance or I have a teammate that has a talent that gives me crit chance and I don't need the crit chance. Well, in that case, I'm going to grab the accuracy so that my, my bullets don't go stray anymore. You see that? How now all the bullets are inside the cursor? And that's great. So now I say, okay, well... You know, maybe I want a little bit more accuracy. Maybe I want uh, a little bit more damage in, in PVE. Maybe I want to do a little bit more range. How about that? Or maybe I don't care about the optimal range and I want more stability because it's shooting all over the place. Well, there you go. Absolute laser. So then I say, okay, well, maybe I could use a little bit more uh, crit chance. You know what I mean? Because I just gave up crit chance for the first thing. Well, maybe you do this. You got crit chance here, which is a, you got a short grip, which you can get crit damage. Say you already have a lot of crit chance and you want to go for the short grip to get some extra uh, extra critical hit damage. You can do that. Um, but I usually always use the laser pointer under under barrel, especially on PC, because the stability does not affect me. But say you wanted a little bit more accuracy, right? Maybe you go with the vertical grip and say, OK, well, this G36, you know, it still has accuracy problems. I still want it to shoot a little bit better. There you go. Look at how accurate that thing is now. So now I go in and say, okay, I want to get a better mag. Uh, I want like a larger amount of, of bullets that I can use. And uh, yeah, let's go in with it. And now this thing's a beast. We turn this thing into a very weak weapon into something that can really just absolutely drill from long range. And that's pretty much how you do your attachments. You, you basically sit here. And you see which guns shoot like what and which needs accuracy and which needs stability and which needs an extra mag and uh, uh, extra mag size. And you just try to figure out which attachments to use on which guns. Um, were there any other weapons that we missed? Uh, yeah, so we pretty much went through all of them. Shotguns. We could go over shotguns real quick. Shotguns, you're usually just going to go for raw damage. Um, there's really not even many attachments here, are there? So there's an underbarrel, so for this I would probably go 
Uh, I'd probably go crit chance, to be honest with you. I'd probably go crit chance here, and then I'd go, uh, uh, maybe you could go accuracy if you wanted to, and lower, that would lower the crit chance, but you see the stability? Okay, so, yeah, so, now that I see it, you would want some stability, for sure. So, we would want the angle grip, probably, and can we even get stability? We can. So, on this, you might want to get some stability. Look how much better it's shooting now. It's, it's, it's not jumping, like, here it was, like, going all up in the air and stuff, and now it's a little bit smoother he's not jumping around as much so uh like i said it all depends on the weapon um it depends on what you like uh as a player do we have any snipers like straight up just sniper rifles i've been i've been getting rid of most of them here we go here's a custom m44 let's see what we would want on this thing now i will say this i think accuracy is one of the most important stats uh on a sniper rifle because what a lot of people don't understand is that that little okay so when you aim in on a sniper do you see those little black lines that move towards the middle of the of the uh crosshair the sniper shots can go pretty much anywhere in between those two black lines right like it's pretty accurate if you wait right if you wait like that it'll go straight but if you have low accuracy did you see that did you see what just happened how that bullet went straight to the left that's because we don't have any accuracy. So let's go in here. Uh, let's try to get some accuracy on this bad boy. Um, we don't want that. We could get the vertical grip there. Get some accuracy there. Uh, we could get some accuracy on... Can we get some accuracy on the barrel as well? We can. So grab some accuracy there. Gonna have to give up some damage to elites, but I mean, let's, let's be honest, that's completely fine. And then watch how much like more straight my weapon shoots. You guys see that? Right to the head. Absolutely 100% accurate. Now you may see some, some, uh, like, uh, what do you call that? Some tracers that looks like it goes sideways, but it's just a bug. It's, it's not supposed to look like that. And that's pretty much how you do it. Accuracy is incredibly important on snipers, guys. So Hopefully that went through most of the things um, and you can always go through and test it out here. We just hit like a direct hit right in its head. Hit another one. And boom. See, accuracy is uh, very, very important on snipers. Oh, we even, we even cracked that one over the, over the wall there. All right, guys. So hopefully this video helped you out and uh, let you know kind of what attachments to use on which guns. Remember, each gun shoots differently, so you have to kind of learn how to change your attachments up depending on the gun that you're using. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to drop the video a like, let me know what you think, and I will talk to you guys next time. Take care, everybody.